Today is a uh, interesting gospel reading, so it, uh, as with all gospel readings, it demands some degree of attention. It says here, Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And so he's saying now that we necessarily need, that we should not be anxious. But this is a very, very difficult thing. And it is especially difficult in this modern world. Now, one of the things that we immediately appreciated, and we saw this in Greece, and we saw this in France, you know, we saw this in Belgium, all right, is there was much less anxiety when we went out, it was to go out and to eat and to have a meal and to relax. And meals weren't, you know, the, the 10 minute meal, another cup of coffee, another cup of coffee, hey, we need to turn that table, so get out of here. Meals were three to four hours. So there was less anxiety there. America is a very anxious country. We are anxious about many things. And there you go, for those of you that, right, that comes out of a gospel reading too, doesn't it, Lori? Right? We're anxious about many things, right? So where does this stem from? Well, one of the things that stems from is that there, what Jesus is saying is a very Eastern way of thinking. It's not a Western way of thinking. So... If we're going to understand anxiety, then we have to understand where it comes from and how we view anxiety. All right. So, and I, and by the way, and I'll repeat this again at the end, this was one of the, this was one of the topics that we did for our Tuesday Zoom classes or Zoom discussions was about anxiety and faith. So everything that I say today is on our website, on the front page, you go to the tab that says Zoom, and then under Zoom, the first one is Anxiety and Faith, and everything that I said today, the entire presentation, is online, so you can take, you can take a look at it. But because of the Gospel reading today, I want to say a couple of points. So, and that's why I have my notes here, just so that I, because I want to make sure that I, I capture these points. So, because America was settled by those that came from the West, then there is this very orderly and scholastic idea of thinking, which kind of flies in the face of what I just said about relaxing in Germany and all that. Okay. So number one thing in America is rule-based reasoning. So there is an answer for every problem. That's the goal. And being an engineer myself, I absolutely understand that. I cannot live without a solution. So the first thing, the first problems that I had in my marriage was trying to solve every problem. When all Presbyteta wanted was for me to listen. She didn't want any of my goofy answers. All she wanted was somebody to listen to. But I wanted to provide the solution. So, we become anxious when we can't find a solution, number one, okay? When we can't find a solution, and this is where my Greek heritage comes in, I will invent a solution. Ergo, drama, right? So, when I can't figure out why something happened, then it's obviously somebody else's fault. And so, I have to figure out how to blame them, right? Is that... There you go, John. Very good. Honestly, I love that. That's good. All right? And then, if we can't solve that, we become more anxious because now we have to figure out what the problem is and there needs to be this solution and that heightens our anxiety. When somebody passes away, in America, the first question we ask is what? Why did he die? We want to know the reason. You have to die for a reason. There has to be a reason there so that I can avoid that reason. All right, And when the answer is, I can't tell you, we become very anxious with that answer, especially when it is somebody younger. When it's somebody older, if they're in, the, if they're in their 80s or 90s or if they're 100, then we, can, then we can relax and we can say, okay, you know, they live, they say, we say things like they lived a good life, it was great, and that's wonderful. But when they die younger and they are closer to our age, then it's a problem. 
Was he a smoker? Did you take drugs? Too much alcohol. You gotta figure something out. So we become very anxious about this and we need this solution. And lastly, we are influenced by, and this comes from our, our, our and this overall comes from a very Hellenistic idea developed by Plato, is that we need to be free from suffering. So our medical profession ingrains that in us. You should not be suffering. Whatever you have, we will take care of it. And if we can't take care of it, we'll give you drugs. And that will take care of it. So in an American culture, we need to be free, or a Western thinking, we need to be free from suffering. Suffering is bad. You must be released from that suffering. That is platonic thinking. Okay, so what is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about now a very Eastern based thinking. He's thinking from the situation where everything is relational. There is a kinonia among everything. We exist not by ourselves, but we exist in harmony with our environment. Our environment can cause us stress, not just us individually, but the environment that we live in. So sometimes we have to examine what kind of environment we live in. Do we live in an environment where we are being abused on a daily basis, where we're abusing ourselves on a daily basis, where we are around people who are abusive? Is what is our relationship to our anxiety, okay? That contradiction can be tolerated. That is a very Eastern thinking, is that you can be healed through your suffering. That's a very, very anti-Western thought, that suffering does good. So when we, have a, what's, when we have an alcoholic, what do we do? We take that alcoholic through this process where they have to hit the bottom, and then when they have gone through that suffering, we say that there's a cleansing, a cathartic experience that has happened, and then they come up out of that. So suffering has purpose. And Jesus Christ has promised us that you will suffer. That's the promise he gave us. He gave us the promise of salvation, I understand that. But he also gave us the promise of suffering. Okay? This is why in the Catholic Church, you, the, the dominant theme in the back of the church is Christ on the cross, because you will suffer. The predominant theme in the Orthodox Church is that's the hope, that you will rise together with Jesus Christ. But both of those things can't be separate. One's not right, the other's wrong. So we, that's a contradiction. I will suffer, but then I will have hope in the end. But that doesn't solve my suffering now, so I don't like it, all right? And that sometimes we need to be like what? Quoting the famous modern prophet, Bruce Lee, be like what? Okay. What does that mean? That means that when you encounter suffering in your life, you should deal with that suffering, but then also then, there may be some of that suffering that you need to surrender to. And I'm not just talking about physical bodily suffering, I'm talking about mental suffering too. We do things that have consequences. If you want to enter into an activity, then understand that the activity could have good consequences and could have bad consequences. And you, you have to be okay with that. If you are not okay with that, then don't enter into that activity. If you want to be a skydiver and fear of heights scares you, then you will be anxious doing that. Then maybe your lot in life is that you can't skydive, but that is anti-American. I will do whatever I want, damn the consequences. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna do what I want. And we have to understand that whatever you take on, marriage, children, those are going to have consequences. Some good, some not so good, but that's, the, that's, what, you, that's what you took on. Now again, of course I'm not saying you stay in abusive relationships or you don't help your friend who, who has a drug problem. I'm not saying those things. Obviously, and that's part of your suffering that you take on too, by the way. 
that, that God puts somebody in your life and you have to go through the suffering with them. You have to watch them in pain knowing that they are doing bad things. And sometimes that's your suffering, is that you have to take that on, all right? And so when we look at anxiety, we have to understand, number one, that Jesus is talking from a perspective that is not our American perspective. That's number one. And then number two is to embrace that perspective if we're going to call ourselves Christians. If you don't want to be a Christian, then don't listen to Jesus. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to be Christian, then understand that suffering, God will put suffering in your life. And sometimes it's not fair because other people suffer less than you do. Or, as I had in my last parish, People would come to me and feel guilty because they suffer less than other people. Take the suffering that you've been given and that, and deal with that suffering and deal with that anxiety and then it won't take the suffering or the anxiety away but it will lessen it because you'll be able to put it into perspective. <laughs>